Hey y'all. So this video is about for an event space. It's about paying your helper, paying your worker, whatever it is that you want to call them, helper, worker for your event space business. Um, in the previous video, I did a video about what they do, about their task, about what they should do and what they shouldn't do, uh, what to expect from them and what not to expect from them. And, um, and also what the customer should expect from them. Cause sometimes the customer feels that they are their decorator. Okay. Um, so this particular video is about how you pay your guy, girl, your helper, the person that's there for you, um, how you pay them. Do you pay them hourly? Do you pay them um, based on each event? Like, what does that look like, right? So I have some of the pros and cons of each, and um, we're going to get into it. If you don't know who I am, I am Z from Build a Business You Love. I've owned four event spaces in the past, and now I just teach people how to own and operate event spaces. Um, I have a course out now, so if you haven't checked it out, be sure to check that out. I have payment plans now and um you know it's i'm just want to show people the ins and outs of events event space ownership what it looks like a lot of times people like to hide it you know i'm listen i'm, I'm gonna show you the good the bad the ugly everything okay because it's important you're starting this business you're putting all your money your effort your time your blood sweat and tears into it and you want to know what goes into it before you start right that's important to me i'm sure it's important to you um so this video is actually about helping people, excuse me, your helper, <laughs> your helper and what, um, how you should pay them, like what that looks like, right? And a lot of times people get kind of, they get kind of confused about this part. Um, I'm facing this way because this is where my screen is and where I have all my notes at. And it's, you know, we are going to be going through everything. So if I look like that, that's why. <laughs> All right. So the first one is um, hourly. We're going to talk about the hourly. If we want to pay them hourly, what does that look like? So first of all, when it comes to payment, we want to talk about four things. We want to talk about fairness, right? We want to talk about um, flexibility, we want to talk about consistency and we want to talk about legal compliance. Okay, so fairness for the hourly, we want to talk about um, that, you know, your helper is adequately compensated, fairly compensated. And you want to ensure that because this is a person that's going to be locking up for you. This is a person that's going to make sure that your event is going smoothly. This is the person that's going to be talking to your customers. So you want to make sure this person is, is compensated, you know, decently, right? For the actual time that they've worked. And um, it needs to be fair. It needs to be straightforward, okay? Next is the flexibility. So if you pay um, your person hourly, when it comes to flexibility, they need to be flexible, right? Because the scheduling... Um, if you do um, time slots and it's expected, but if you don't do time slots and people can book any amount of time, right? Or based on whatever you have set for your business. But it's about making sure that they have that flexibility and hourly allows for some flex flexibility. It can help your um, helper to work varying hours and it depends on demand, right? So it kind of helps because, you know, they only work for, you're only paying them for what they work for, right? Consistency, consistency. Consistency provides a steady income stream for your helper and it can help them to better plan and to be stable, but it also helps you as a business owner to better plan and be um, more efficient financially, right? You can say in your head, okay, well, I know, you know, the past three months I paid the the uh, helper work this amount of hours, I'm going to pay them this amount of money, right? And you can better plan your financial situation, your budget, your um, P&L statement. You can plan your um, all of your profitability statements, all of your um, financial statements. You can better plan and better prepare for the future, right? You can see trends. What does this look like this year? What does this look like versus what does this look like uh, this time last year, right? So it's you can help to better prepare that way. Now, legal compliance. Now, generally, this will align with whatever legal laws, labor laws, and regulations that are in your state as it applies to minimum wage and overtime. Um, a lot of times people like to do stuff off the books. 
I ain't one to say nothing. I, I, I keep my mouth closed with that one. I, you know, it is or it ain't, I, you know. Um, <laughs> now, the cons to uh, working hourly is um, the events can be, if the events are less frequent or occur irregularly, then the hourly pay may be uncertain, right? So if you have infrequent events, if you have um, your event schedule is kind of wonky, if you say if you don't have scheduled events or time slots or something like that, then it may be uncertain for your helper and they may not like that. People like consistency when it comes to their money. They like knowing, okay, I'm going to get this amount of money, you know, for this amount of time. They, they like knowing that. Um, potential overpayment. If events st start or end earlier, it might be, you know, inconsistent with... Um, if they work, they may end up with more or less money because of potential overpayment, right? Based on if the if the event when the event starts and when the event ends. Um, also, what it means when they're monitoring, right? So if they're there monitoring the event, oh my light keeps going out. If they're there monitoring the event then what that looks like. So how do you track the hours, right? So hourly tracking is another thing. Like what constitutes when it starts? Is it as soon as they come? Is it as soon as the event starts? Is it like what starts that hourly pay, right? So all of that needs to be concrete. It needs to be outlined in whatever contract or whatever you work out with that person. Now, when it comes to pay per event, this is what I did. I pay per event because it was easier for my, me um, budget-wise. I was able to expect and know exactly what the person was getting. They knew what they was getting per event. I had time slots and that's how it worked, it worked out well for me. Um, it, increased, it increases efficiency for the helper since they know the amount that they're going to get paid no matter you know what time that they spent. Sometimes people... Um, will have a time slot or a business, the event space will have a time slot and the event may go over time, but they still know, you know, based on the event, how much they're going to get paid. It's simple. That's, that's the last one. It's simple. It aligns with my revenue. It was simple as far as time tracking, as far as, far as you know, payroll and paying them. It helped me with aligning my labor costs with my um, profits um, and how I, how my profits were incurred. It helped me a lot in understanding where my money was going as it relates to my help. So for me, it really allowed me to have some um, financial stability, okay? Now, let me go here. I want you to consider these things when you are actually working out something with your helper. I want you to consider the event frequency that you're having. How many events do you have? How, um, how, is the volume of people, right? Is it a high volume of people that they have to clean up after if you have them cleaning up what that looks like? Um, hourly pay, it you know, you want to make sure that if it's hourly, if it's per event, everything is stipulated and agreed to between you and that particular helper. The nature of the events, you want to make sure that they understand that these are baby showers, kids parties. So it's going to be, even though I didn't allow glitter, glitter sometimes got in there. I didn't allow confetti, confetti sometimes got in there. And you want to make sure that, you know, they're understanding that they have to clean up this stuff, right? Again, full transparency, allow them to consider these things. You consider them when you're hiring someone and letting them know, hey, what it is that they're going to have to do. Whichever one it is that you choose, make sure that you're fully transparent with them. It's important for you to do the thing first. I know a lot of um, people are big on passive income and allowing their business to be completely passive, but you have to do it first. I would suggest you do this for one year. You do the cleaning, you do the booking, you do the um, the customer service, talking to people. You You do all of those things on your own. So you understand what it feels like to push the broom, how long it takes to clean your space, uh, what's involved, what it entails. So that way, when someone else does it, you're not telling them to clean up an event space in two minutes when you know it takes two hours, right? Depending on how big the space is, right? But you know 
what it does. You know what it takes. So it's important for you to go through the things first and then they, you know, before you hire someone so that you know what the expect expectations are so you can relay those expectations to someone else, okay, to your helper. You got to know what you're doing first. Anyway, I'm Z from Build the Business You Love. Let me know below what you decide to do or if you have experience in event space, what that looked like when you had your event at an event space or what you decided to do for your event space or even what you anticipate on doing if you open in one in the future. Be sure to download one of my freebies. If you don't grab the course, grab the course. Um, teaches you how to start, operate, and manage an event space. It's a great course. And um, yeah, I'm Z and I'm out. Later.